trying to set this camera up. Let me know if you guys can hear me too. There's a new microphone we're using, so tell me if you hear me or not. You guys can hear me? Can you hear me pretty good? Pretty clear? All right, so you know it's Tuesday, so it's another episode. Hold on, let me get my, you know I always have to have my Herbalife drink, right? Because I need to get myself fired up a little more. As you can see, we're checked in at the West Nyack Firehouse. I tried contacting them. I, would like, I wanted to do my Facebook Live over there today, but for some reason they were unavailable to speak. So uh, I checked in there. Since I couldn't be there in person, they wouldn't allow me to. So I'm just going to check in there. You'll get the point. We'll get into that later. So it's Tuesday, so you know it's another, it's time for another episode of Steve Says. Make sure you all go follow, follow our business page because we're going to be doing these a little more often on the business page, not just the personal page, just because we're past the friends limit or whatever on the personal page at 5,000, so it's hard to add more people. So make sure you follow the business page. It's Peak Physique, Personal Training, Boot Camp, or Boxing. Once you do follow it, that's where we're going to start doing the lives in a couple weeks once we get everyone transferred over to that just because we had to block a lot of people out. And as much as I like taking out the trash on my personal page and deleting handfuls of people every day of those assholes I don't want on there, it's becoming harder and harder to find the deletable people as I put more good people in there. So, you know, we have so many awesome followers that believe in us and our mission, so make sure you go follow our business page and also leave a five-star review on the business page. If you have less than five stars to leave for the review, then you're probably like the boyfriend or the fucking lover or the prostitute or pet goat of one of our competitors or something, so fuck off, don't leave a review. Even if you do, your low reviews is just going to be drowned out by hundreds and hundreds of five-star reviews. So go ahead, knock yourself out. It's not going to matter. It's going to get drowned out by the positivity. Anyway, so yes, it's going to be one of those days because I'm a little fired the fuck up today. So there's a lot going on. So we had a party this Saturday over at the West Nyack Firehouse. We'll get into that in a moment. So thanks all for coming out to the party. We greatly appreciate it. It's not only the best night in peak physique history, but it was even one of the best nights of just my entire life, just seeing everyone that come out there. You know, it's not about some award or some stupid fucking car prize or whatever. But you're all the real superstars. You're all the real heroes. You're all the real motherfucking prize that, from that contest that we won. So, like many of you, my goal with Peak Physique was to create an atmosphere, like, you know, as many of you know, where everyone can fit in, be given a chance for redemption in their life or have a place to turn where, no, where there was nowhere else to turn, an environment where they can get results with, you know, they never imagined achievable anywhere else. You know, much like the way I felt, as you know, before I joined the Marine Corps. So I'll actually be discussing the Marines a little later in detail. Basically, this party that we had Saturday was just a manifestation of the vision that I had many years ago, bringing a bunch of crazy-ass freaks together with a common goal of fitting in, being accepted, getting over past failures, fuck-ups, and just to become a better version of yourself today than you were yesterday. So every, everything in life falls, falls into place, you know, if you do that. So... To, to see that continued evolution of our family and the complete unfucking stoppable force that Peak Physique has become made me stand there at the party as just a proud general ready to celebrate with his victorious platoon over, you know, after emerging victorious at a major battle. Now, th this award, this party was for you guys. You guys are all Peak Physique. It is not me. It's not even just the trainers. It's all of you that come in here every day and bust your ass and change your lives and get results. So I also wanted to thank Eliana for using her psycho powers for good for once rather than evil and putting together such an amazing freak show party, you know, on such a short amount of time. I think like two to three days or something, you guys put that all together. So I also want to thank all of our staff for the, for the magic that, that happens every day. You know, we appreciate you guys. The posters on the wall at that party were, were the highlight of the night for me is seeing all those posters. And they'll, we'll be hanging those up in the gym. I'm going to find a spot to put them all in the gym. They're going to be here forever. We're going to frame them, do what we have to do. The amount of stories and struggle and failure and triumph and victory and success and change that was in those posters, you know, it was all in that one room. That, that was fucking magic. That's what gets me up at 3.45 in the morning every single day, no matter what I have going on that day. That's what gets me up and makes me hit the ground running every single morning with a sense of, sense of purpose, is those puzzles that are those posters that we saw. So let, I have them right here. We're going to show you them real quick, some of them, just to see what I'm talking about. If you guys could see them. This is what was hanging on the walls at the party. A bunch of the members and trainers and everything just set up these posters with their why, of course. He wants no dick do. No dick do is his reason. That's his why. 
We all know about the dick do from last week. Here's some other stuff, team, achievement, motivation, just tons of pictures, collages put together on this poster. This was a highlight of the night, seeing these up on the wall, seeing everything come together, all the different from the, over the years. Right here's some more. Just some results pictures, pictures of training. These are all gonna be up on the wall in the gym. You can look at these. They're gonna be there forever. These are not going anywhere. I'm just gonna run these by you real quick just so you can see what I'm talking about. There's a bunch of them. We're just gonna fly through them just so you can see them. This one was from, who's this from, Jill? Who's that from? Bam, right there. Another one, Peak Freaks. You guys are proud to be Peak Freaks, right? There's another one, tons of photos, staff, group. Some of these pictures were taken literally the, the day of the party and somehow they were already printed, developed, put onto these posters and up on the wall by the time I got there. So that just shows you what kind of dedication. Like some of these pictures were just done, were just added. Just, we just added that day or just took that day even in classes. So that's fucking crazy that they're up on the wall. There's a couple more, whatever. We don't need to go through all of them, but maybe we will go through all of them. I got so much more to get to, so much fun, more fun to get to. What makes Peak Freaks number one? Strength, guidance, no excuses, family focus. There's all the Peak Freaks back in the cave, those little maniac kids, a bunch of the clients, members. Some of those people have been here for seven, eight years. And there's just tons more. I'm just going to show you from back here. You can come and check them out in the gym. When I'm far away like this, let me know if you guys can still hear me. There's a mic set up, so you should be able to hear me a little better. There's tons of these. Here's one of my story. Actually, this is gonna be our case study for today. Christine, this is her poster that she made with, if you can see this, I don't know what that is supposed to be. I look more like a leprechaun. This supposed to look like a, a marine. It looks like I'm a, a fucking leprechaun, but whatever. I guess leprechauns are good. And then there were just big framed pictures. There were pictures all over the place that we just literally posted a couple of days before that. So awesome that we got all that stuff put together. So, oh wait, let me show you one more post picture real quick. See this tape on the corners of these posters? It was taped on the wall, right? That one little piece of tape that's missing right here, that fucking piece of tape is worth $300 fucking dollars. I'm gonna explain that to you in a minute, how that one little piece of tape is worth $300. We'll get to those assholes in a second. So, but anyway, there's uh, some glass sculpture things up there. I'll show you in a second if we have some time for it. So, let's get back to business. And back in the gym, party's over, burn off some of those fucking calories from the food and the drinks. You know, I think I didn't even eat much food there. I may have had an adult beverage or two, maybe, not sure. Had to celebrate with the freak fam, freak, peak freak family, right? So it's time to get back to, back to business, back to, back to the fucking war. Celebration of this major battle's over. It's time to continue march forward. It's time to seek and destroy the enemy, create new victories. That's what we're here for. You know, we have, we're gonna, we're gonna create so many more reasons to party over the next weeks and months and years and decades. There's gonna be a chance to party all the time and you know, act like we have no sense, probably like we did then. Anyway, so time to get back to bringing the fucking fire every second of every second. That's what we're gonna do. We'll see you all at the gym this week. I'll be taking a lot of the classes this week and then the upcoming weeks. I'll be training a few classes this week also. So I look forward to sweating in the trenches with you guys and torturing the fuck out of all of you for some of the poor decisions you guys made on Saturday. I'll try to read some of the stuff you guys are writing, but I got so much stuff to get to and we gotta be done before this class starts. So thanks again, you're all freaking awesome. Thanks for coming out. So as you guys saw, there's some pictures on Facebook of all these police outside of that, that party at the end. So a lot of people are asking, what happened? What did you do? Thinking I did something, I caused some trouble or something. So a lot of you been asking what the police activity outside the party was. So why were the cops called? So for any of you that didn't know, like I was saying, Eliana planned this party with the help of some of you, you know, putting it all together in two or three days. And she paid a good amount of money for this stuff out of her own pocket. So three, 300 of that dollars was for a deposit for the rental for the room at the West Nyack Firehouse, at the, at the West Nyack Department over there. Try and see if you guys are reading anything, writing anything while I'm going, but I'll see it again later. So now before I even start the story, I have a confession to make. The party was over and we were cleaning up. It was about midnight and I see these four men confronting one of my staff who was over there crying and, and two of my members who were sitting there yelling back and forth with these four men who I don't recognize. So the first radar that I have built in me, it differentiates between, between friend and foe. And these four men were, di were displaying 100% foe signals. So that's all I needed to know. So the confession I have to make is that initially I had no idea what their confrontation was about. But I saw two of my fucking people, three of my people being bombarded by these four men showing their foe signals. 
And they were obviously not with us. I had no idea didn't do who they were. They were inside the, this party while we were cleaning up. So you know what? I don't even need to know the reason why they were there. The reason is irrelevant, at first at least, as I'm obligated to rush to the aid of my people without fucking hesitation, not needing to know the reason. Like I said, when you, when you all had that circle around me at the end of that party, and we were ready to pop that bottle of uh, the protein shake bottle or whatever I popped there at the end, you, you were all... I was telling you, you are all my why. You are all why I do what I do, that I will kill for every one of you and I, die, I will die for everyone. This is not just talk. So the second I see my people in trouble, I don't really care what the problem is. I don't care whose fault or whatever it is. I'm going to rush over there. Now, if it turns out my people were at fault, I would be the first one to apologize for them and for myself and to make things right. In this instance, this is not one of those cases. And we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that in detail. So these, so these four guys, one of them was the man who rented the place, the hall out to uh, Eliana. He walks up to her right at midnight because the party's over midnight while we're cleaning up. We're finishing up gathering our things. We have our fucking jackets on ready to leave. These four, these four goons come walking right over to her in front of all her guests and tell her immediately, you're not getting your deposit back. Okay, so first of all, what kind of fucking douchebag is going to do that, okay? The, po- the point is they point to this one-inch piece of scotch tape from one of these fucking posters on the wall. Literally, and I'm not exaggerating, a one-inch piece of fucking scotch tape. That could be peeled off. It didn't rip any of the wall. It was just a piece of scotch tape left on the wall. And apparently in her contract, she couldn't put anything on the wall. So she did, re- okay, she, broke, she breached the contract with a piece of fucking scotch tape. One-inch piece of scotch tape. Not an exaggeration. So, they, and then they say people were outside, that people were loud in the parking lot as they were leaving. And it says you can't be loud when you're outside in their parking lot in their contract. So that was a breach of her contract. Apparently that's worth one inch piece of Scott's tape and people loud in the parking lot while they're leaving is worth fucking $300 to these fucking assholes over there. So as we're ready to exit and they're, they're saying to her, you know, you're supposed to be out of here by 12. It's literally like 12 fucking three. They're, they're coming out there, these four guys, with the contract in their hand. Obviously, their agenda is fucking set already. They know they're planning on keeping that $300 fucking dollars, probably going out drinking or going out to the strip club with, with her fucking money that night. So it's pretty obvious they had zero intention of giving, of giving back any deposit. And anyone who knows me knows I have the greatest respect and support for all of our military, our police, our firefighters. I'm actually a member of the NIAC chamber, uh, chapter of the American Legion. And I regularly volunteer, donate, and run fundraisers for tons of different organizations. I've personally trained dozens of, of future police and firemen to help them prepare for the academy and train hundreds of future Marines and all the military, hundreds of them literally, as they're getting ready to go off the boot camp. That's what I originally had planned to talk about today until these fucking douchebags pissed me off and we kind of switched gears a little bit. We're going to get into the Marine Corps a little bit and what we do with those guys a little bit later, but I got sidetracked by these fucking assholes over there. So just like the Marine Corps or any other organization that you, we, you have, we had them in the Marine Corps, that we have with you is what's called the five percenters. Those are the, the bad apples. The ones that lie, the cheat, the steal, they manipulate the system to benefit themselves. And I'm pretty sure these wannabe fucking bullies were a little bit of the 5% of the police department. Assuming they were a part of the police department. I don't even know, so don't hold me to that. Maybe they weren't. But I'm pretty sure that the, the West Knight Police Department over there as a whole upholds the highest standards and morals. And I'm sure that, they, that the majority of them are true heroes, and I appreciate what they do for our community on a daily basis. I'm just talking about these fucking assholes that were there at the party at the end. That's who I'm talking to, not your entire fire department, just to set that clear. So honestly, I have no idea if they're firemen. I'm just assuming they are. So there's nothing against that firehouse, like I said. Just these four assholes. These little sour fucking 5% individual scumbags. So back to the story, as I keep getting sidetracked, because I'm a little fucking pissed off right now. And this is me. This, they're, 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 we're, we're at the party. People are like, oh, calm down. You're just drunk. You're just drunk. First of all, I'm a, just I'm aware, as aware as I am right now, any time that I have, I have complete control of everything I do. If anything, when I do have an adult beverage, I'm even more focused because I don't want to do something where someone says you're doing it just because you're drunk. Right now, am I drunk? No, I'm drinking fucking Herbalife, but I'm a little more fucking amped up than I was when I was supposedly only acting up because I was drunk. I'm not drunk now, so now you can see the real fucking truth. The drunkness is probably what caused me from not escalating this shit to a different level. So back to the story. As I see these, these fucking bullies, and that's exactly what the fuck they were, uh, I approach them, or I go over to the, the people who are over there crying and yelling with these people in front of our guests and our members and our, our people of the gym. And the second I walk over, the four tough guys start telling me to calm down. All I did is walk over and said, what's the problem over here? Why are they crying? And they start telling me, calm down, calm down, calm down. Let me buy you a drink, calm down. I don't want to go buy me a drink and calm down. I was actually pretty calm, a lot more calm than I am right now. If they think that wasn't calm, then that, that's <laughs> whatever. So at this point, at least, I was still calm. The guy starts waving his contract in the air, pointing at the evil fucking one-inch piece of scotch tape on the wall. Then they mentioned to me about the people in the parking lot 
which funny enough, it's the fucking year two. They didn't come out into the parking lot telling them to lower the music. You went out there, louder than the fucking music, screaming for them to lower the music. It's on videotape, fucking asshole. And they lowered the music the first time you told them. But you're saying they were out there being rude and this and that. No, who was the rude one, dickhead? It's on fucking videotape. Fucking asshole. So there were people leaving as these four unfine young gentlemen were arriving and they rudely yelled for them to lower the music, which they do immediately, which is on recorded. They recorded this happening. So they're telling me that's why they're keeping $300 is because the people were loud and rude in the parking lot and there's a piece of tape on the wall and it's 12.03 and we're supposed to be out of there at 12. So the videotape shows otherwise and obviously, you know, they have a different agenda. They're walking out there with four of them telling her in front of her freaking people, you know. So as, so as these four people are confront, confront me, confronting me, my four people are crying and screaming. Obviously, I don't take this lightly. So I started to get a little bit upset, you know. Adult beverages or not, I'm fully aware of every single little detail of everything I do. Like I said, this didn't happen because I may or may not have had an adult beverage, right? This, this actually, like I said, caused, that caused me not to escalate it. These four thought they would start to like circle around me and tell me to calm down. And you know, that might not have been their best move, just to tell you the truth. You know, my people are pulling me to exit the building as these four bullies are looking on. And they're looking at me as if like the, the members of our gym that are telling me to leave the gym, they're looking at these four guys looking at me like, oh, you're lucky that your people just saved you. But it reminds me of this one story. When I was visiting home from the Marine Corps, I just was, got home on visit. I was at this gas station buying a protein bar or something. It was like two in the morning with two friends of mine. And this car pulls in with like five or six guys. And for some reason, they start talking shit to me for whatever reason. It wasn't in the best neighborhood. What, what, that doesn't, that's regardless. It doesn't matter. So they start talking shit to me. Whatever. We're exchanging words and whatever. Just dumb shit yelling back and forth or something, whatever. And they actually knew the two friends I was with. And they thought the two friends that I was with was going to help them jump me because they, they knew them. So my friend is begging them, no, don't do this. Just forget about it. It's not worth it. He's telling them that, you know, not to go, you know, supposedly jump me or whatever. So I'm obviously ready to do whatever I have to do to defend myself. Well prepared for that in many ways, if you know what I mean. So my friend starts yelling at them and he's like, listen, Listen, he tells them, the four or five, six guys, I don't even remember how many there were. He's like, listen, I'm not doing this to save him from you guys. I'm doing this to save you guys from him. So that's kind of what it reminded me of at this party on Saturday night as the members were pulling me out of the firehouse and these four douchebags are looking, smiling, and like, like, they're getting, like, like uh, I'm getting saved from them. Quite the opposite, actually. So back inside, the, back, back, backtrack a little, back inside the firehouse, you know, there's some commotion there. But I exit the building with our remaining guests. And what's outside already, outside in the parking lot, there's like... Several police cars already out there. The Clarkstown police, they're awesome. I know they're quick responders. But I don't think they're that quick of responders. So now either they're such quick responders or these four scumbags called ahead of time, knowing they were basically trying to rip off this poor girl for $300 and they knew someone was going to get upset because why are the police already out there? They're out there because of someone playing their music that they turned down right when they asked them to. There were several cop cars the second I walk outside that these guys obviously planned ahead of time. So whatever. So before we go any, any, any further... Even if there was actually $300 worth of damage, which I'm fairly certain a piece of fucking scotch tape and someone playing music as they're exiting a parking lot, I'm pretty sure that's not worth $300. So what kind of fucking assholes walk right up to a person hosting a fucking party in front of their guests and announce, oh, you're not getting your deposit back in front of your guests and in front of your people that are there at your party, causing a scene and embarrassing people? Like what kind of fucking douchebag does that? So... Anyway, you know what kind? A, fuck, a punk ass little bitch is the kind that does that. That's who does it. That's who uh, what, could only per, kind of person that could possibly operate like that. A little bully, a little wannabe bully has the police waiting outside already because they know they're ripping this person off of their money and the police are already out there waiting. Clarkstown Police, you guys are awesome, by the way. We know a ton of you. We train a ton of you. You guys do help us out over here at our gym. Anyway, so now these police are standing between me and these four unfine gentlemen and the officer speaking to me. You know, one of these firefighters, whatever, I don't know if he's a firefighter, I don't want to call them firefighters, I don't know what the asshole was, I'm assuming they were, but anyway, the police officer is speaking to me, so the, this gentleman is behind him, this asshole that kept the money and told her she's not getting her money back, he starts making these fucking duck lips at me and nodding his head like this at me with some duck lips. First of all, what kind of fucking grown man makes some puckering up duck lips and, and because he's in police protection at another man behind a cop's back and, and puckering up. What kind, of, what kind of fucking man does that? What kind of grown man smokes, smirks at another man with his duck lips nodding his head? You know what kind? A complete little fucking bitch. That's what kind. Anyway, so I also heard a rumor that one of the men was mentioning to the cops that I pushed him or I, I pushed him up against a wall or I grabbed him. Now, it could be a rumor. I didn't hear that it happened, but I did hear that someone heard them telling the cops that I pushed one of them against the wall. 
So just in case, I want to set the record straight. I didn't touch any one of you fuckers. You know how I know I didn't touch any of you fuckers? Because, well, first of all, unless I turn green and just start throwing you fucking through walls like the Incredible Hulk, I'm pretty certain I didn't lay a hand on any of you little fucking bitches. But besides, you know, do I look like the pushing type to you? My friends, no. If I touched you, you wouldn't have been able to stand there and tell the cops how I touched you. You would have been telling him probably the next day or two when you're fucking sp- scooping up your teeth off the fucking ground, waking up in the hospital. Then you could tell him that I touched you. So if I had touched you, there's no way you would have been able to stand there moments later telling the police how I touched you, okay? If you, get, if you catch my fucking drift. Anyway, I actually have a lot more restraint than, than that, you know? And to make sure no one can say, like I said, that I was drunk or whatever. So no one got touched, all right? Anyway, moving on. So, right, like I said, this is my adult beverage, my Herbalife. This is what gets me fired up. This is what gets me rolling. So now, before anyone decides to start defending this or attempting to bash me about, oh, these are the the firemen, they're so great, you breached the contract. So we reached out to the fire department for three days in a row now, and they refused to answer our phone calls. So today, and Eliana was calling, I was calling. So today, what happens is she calls from someone else's phone, and this guy who rented her the place answers the phone finally. He didn't answer for three days, so she called from another phone he didn't recognize. He answers it on the first ring. She tells him who it is, and this fucking little bitch hangs up on her. Yeah, that's the kind of upstanding fucking people you have over there renting out the place over there, which is why I checked into this place, to make sure hopefully some of you, your higher up people can see it. And I apologize for the language, but if you could tell, I'm a little freaking fired up over this. So the reason why we had that party before people start try to bash about what I'm saying about the fine firemen over there in, in West Nyack or whoever they were. I don't know if they were firemen, so I don't want to even say that they're firemen. I hope they're not firemen. I hope that's not who re- representing the fire department. I really hope they're just some goons that rent out the place and steal people's money. I hope so. I hope those guys are not firemen. That's pretty sad. Anyway, the reason why we had that surprise party for me and for, for my wife and for the gym was for being voted America's top trainer and studio, which was due to a huge impact we have on the community. That's why we had this award. So that was due to the countless amount of people that we help, mainly for the volunteer work that I do for our military recruiters all over Rockland County, mainly the Nanuet recruiter and all over the Hudson Valley, the training I do for the police and the firemen, the fundraisers that I have generated thousands of dollars for in charity, for charity every year, in addition to the thousands I personally donate to various charities every single year and have run fundraisers for like the American Heart Association, the Epilepsy Foundation, Autism Speaks, Wounded Warriors, Semper Fi Fund, American Legion, Shoe Drives, Toy Drives. I do a free fucking boxing class every week for over eight years now that I offer every single week free Thursday night, 615. Come and check it out. Hey, you guys, you four, you four gentlemen, you're, you're definitely coming to check out that free boxing class, right? Just make sure you sign that health waiver before you come in, right? I'm going to hook you guys up. Anyway, so someone, someone can come to that class every single week for free. It, we've had a free burn and learn class for, for kids that are one to six years old. We did it for a year. Me and Mark Hoberman at Great Success, he did 45 minutes of tutoring the kids for free, first grade to sixth grade, and I did 45 minutes of a free kids boot camp, totally free. So before someone tries to start bashing it, this is the kind of stuff, this is the kind of stuff we do over here at the gym that we're just trying to defend our people. So I just need to more, have a little more sip of early life. We're actually setting up right now one of the biggest and craziest charity events you've ever seen and ever heard of in Rockland County or probably anywhere in the world that I'm working on right now. And I'm going to have a ton of more details on that pretty soon. But the craziest charity event, you've never seen anything like this before. Going to be wild, off the wall, unimaginable shit you've never seen before. I'll have details on that soon. So again, this is not just a case of me being a dick. This is a case of me doing what I would expect any Marine or any other man with morals to do or person with morals to do, and that is to defend and help They're people. Nothing more, nothing less. This isn't about $300. I don't give a fuck if it was $3 only. It's about having morals and and some standards and doing the right thing. So my next fundraiser that I'm doing is going to be for, we have these raffle tickets at the gym. I'm going to offer everyone in the gym to buy raffle tickets for $2 per ticket. It's going to be a $300 gift basket because $300 is apparently so much money nowadays, but there's going to be $300 worth of, of gifts in a gift basket for all the members of the gym. You can buy each raffle ticket for $2 to win that basket, right? The first $300 that we, that we generate in this is going to go towards Eliana to give back her that deposit, all right? But then any additional money we raise, over $300, I'm going to personally go and donate it to the West Nyack Fire Department since those fuckers are obviously so strapped for funds or over budget or some shit that they need to stoop so low to cut some poor girl out of $300 deposit. After she already paid a $600 rental fee and a $125 cleanup fee that they charge, you know the funny thing, I saw a copy of the contract. It says $600 rental fee includes setup and breakdown of chairs and tables. Then you're also charged a $125 fee for 
set up and breakdown of chairs. Awesome job there, guys. So whatever I get over on this charity, I'm going to personally donate to the West Nyack Fire Department. You guys are obviously strapped for cash. I'm going to try and help you guys out. I feel bad you have to rob people and steal people's money. Then I'm going to donate the additional money. After we give her $300 back that you guys stole, I'm going to donate the rest to you guys. Okay? So just to show how reasonable of a person I am and try to help you guys out. If for some reason we don't generate even $300, which I'm sure we will, selling the raffle tickets, I'll personally pay her back for that deposit because that's what we do. We do the right thing. We take care of our people. We have fucking morals. So some of you out there, oh, also, there's going to be a lot of other ways to, for you members to earn raffle tickets. I'm going to post on the, our, VI, our private Facebook VIP page after this Facebook Live. You have a lot of other ways to earn some raffle tickets. I'm going to show you guys about that, some other stuff on our uh, VIP page. So check that out after this live is over. So uh, enough of this shit before I start getting pissed off and I end up breaking my fucking computer screen because this is pissing me off. So I'm going to go to originally what I was talking about is the, is the Marines that we're training. There's a bunch of messages on here. I don't even know what they say. There's a lot of messages there. Anyway, so back to the Marine Corps. What I was originally planning on talking about is if you've been following us on social media, you know we've been training the future Marine Corps recruits uh, from the recruiting station here in Nanuet. I opened the doors here to the local recruiters to give them a motivating space and environment to train their kids. I also I volunteer to train them personally as often as possible that I can in my schedule. We try to do it at least one week. We've had them come in here. They come in here, train here. About two weeks ago, we, if you saw that, the crazy fucking footage that we did, I'll put some more out there today if I, if I can find it. We, we hosted the whole joint Hudson Valley region, their monthly joint training operation workout here at Peak Physique. We had almost, I think, 50, 60, I don't even know how many, a shitload of current and future Marine recruits coming here, preparing for what lies them ahead to, to prepare them to become America's next freedom fighters. So talk about my fucking why. These kids were, are my why. They are my five fucking percent. Not these other douchebags that I was talking about. So now, th now this is my deep, true reason of why I do what I do. The way I do what I do, how I do it, at the pace that I do it, and at the intensity that I do it, is those kids that come in here that are getting set off to go ship out to boot camp. The opportunity for me to give back and volunteer my time to, to pay it forward to these future Marines is priceless. The, I feel blessed that I'm able to even give my time to them and help them out. When I joined the Marine Corps, I had, I had nothing. I had no hope, nowhere for, me to, nowhere for me to fit in, nowhere that would accept me. Fucking college wasn't happening unless I was going there, I don't know, to cause some trouble probably. But as a lot of you already know, that's why I started Peak Physique, was to create this atmosphere, this experience for people who didn't fit in, like I said earlier. And much like I was before I joined the Marine Corps. So if I didn't join the Marine Corps, I would have either been in prison or probably dead. So... Much like many times in my recent memory, the culture I envisioned when I started the quest, it came full circle around, and here I was a couple Saturdays ago in the gym with 50 versions of my old self, these young, fresh, green, ready-to-be marine-killing machines, ready to take on the fucking world, and I'm sure they're not as fucked up and crazy as I was at that age, but they were still me. They are, they are me. It was an honor and a privilege to be able to, to lead those future marines, even though I absolutely fucking tortured them for over two hours, and over more than half of the two hours was outside, and I think it was about 14 degrees outside, and it felt like negative seven, so it was a good time. We had shorts and tank tops and flip-flops out there for training in the cold. You got to get used to that. You got to do some hot weather, some desert training, some cold weather training. So I pre truly appreciate the fact that I'm able to volunteer to help these kids out and, and give them a motivating, inspiring home to train at and give that feeling of belonging and camaraderie and sense of purpose to kickstart their, their upcoming journey, journey to the beautiful resort over there in Paris Island, South Carolina. You know, shipping out for boot camp was actually the first time I was ever on a plane, and it's the first time I ever even left New York or New Jersey area. So, and in that time in the Marine Corps, I was able to travel the world, thanks to the Marine Corps, and they have still instilled in me the work ethic, the discipline, the morals, the morals that apparently you fuckers over at the firehouse don't have. Maybe we should ship your fucking asses out to the Marine Corps, fucking whoop some sense into your dumb asses. Anyway, I'm still a Marine, still in the fucking battlefield, and I always will be, and, and the shit they've instilled in me, and the restraint they instilled in me, the firehouse gentleman should thank the fucking Marine Corps for the restraint that they put in me. That I, whatever, we're not going to get into that again because it's just going to piss me off. As was displayed on Saturday night. So you can thank the Marine Corps for that. So we've since been also contacted by the Army about setting up training programs. We're willing to help all, out the, all the armed, forces, armed forces, you know. We'll open our doors to all of them, of course. You know, we'll just give them a little more breaks and more recovery time. We won't train them as hard because, you, know, we, we, we're, we're, you know, it's not the Marines or anything. Just kidding, sort of. Anyway, I don't want to piss off all my Army friends and followers out there. But I'm just kidding. A little bit, sort of. You get the point. And I have a tremendous respect for all my brothers in uniform, willing to sacrifice you know, their, for our safety and our freedom on a daily basis. All branches of service are welcome here. The police, the firefighters, 
fucking mailmen, just not the douchebag firefighters. You are welcome here, douchebag firefighters. Thursday night, free boxing. Just sign the health waiver, please, please. Make sure you sign it twice in like a couple different languages, just to be sure, you know, in case you slip and fall or some shit. Anyway, I had a question. Someone asked me, why was our flag backwards? It's not backwards. We would never put it backwards. That's because Facebook does some weird, twisted shit when you... Oh, I can't read those comments. When you do Facebook Live, it twists everything around. So that flag is not backwards. You should never fly a flag upside down unless you're in complete distress and you're ready. You're, it's a life or death situation and you need to have a, sign of, a display, a sign of distress is when you put your flag upside down. Just to give you a little quick flag education. You really, and in your house even, you should only display your flag since we're talking about flags and I have a little passion about the flag in our country and, and doing the right thing. Unlike you fucking douchebags over at the fire department. Yes, we're going to keep coming back to you. So... You only should display your flag from sunrise to sunset. If you have, the des you have the desire to be like patriotic and have it 24 hours a day, you should actually have your flag illuminated during the dark hours. It should not be out there in the dark, and you also should not have it out there in any bad inclement weather. It should be brought in unless you have an all-weather flag, which is a huge flag, a different material, which probably I'm pretty sure you don't have at your house. The flag should never touch the ground. should never touch anything beneath it. And like I said, only flown upside down if it's a signal of extreme danger to life or property. So you know what time is it? Shit. Damn, I could talk. Who's laughing over there? Oh, good thing you're here. You. Me? Yeah, in a second. I need you in a second. Oh, boy. <laughs> Report to the principal's office. In a couple seconds. Too bad, you're going on camera today. Yeah, you don't like cameras. I saw you on that party this weekend. You seem to like the fucking cameras in. Doing your strip so you left with like hundreds of hundreds of dollar bills on you. Oh, this is your big break. Anyway, you know, today's the first Tuesday of the month. It's our physical fitness test. We we're supposed to go into detail about the physical fitness test today. We were too busy talking about our friends over at the fire department. So we're gonna go into more detail. I guess next Tuesday, you know it's a one minute on, two minutes off of push-ups, squat thrusts, crawl outs, plank walks. Just make sure you whatever, if you're doing a modification on any of those exercises on your physical fitness test, make sure you're doing the same modification every single week. Damn, it's getting late. We're gonna talk about plateaus real quick because we had a question about plateaus. We're gonna fly through all this shit. That's just what we're gonna do. We got a little time. So plateaus in general are a, are a fucking myth, okay? It's usually just an excuse as to why you didn't get the desired result that you were looking for. Deep down, most times when someone screams out the plateau, pulls out the plateau card, they know deep inside there was the, something more they could have done that week or that month or there was a point where they had a lapse in their discipline. They slacked or they, and they missed a workout or they slept in late and they played catch up all day and just never got their shit together. They probably had a few drinks at a party or they ate something they shouldn't have eaten. That's what they're calling a plateau these days. There's no such thing as a plateau. It is fake, it is a myth. Just because you steadily lose weight for a couple weeks or a couple months and then all of a sudden you don't lose weight for a single week or two weeks, that is not a plateau. It probably means you got complacent, you started to assume the results and, and the weight loss were just gonna be automatic or a given that you already earned in, in, in previous weeks and you thought you, the results are owed to you continuously, but that's just not how that shit works. It's a game of what have you done for me lately? That's what it's about. You need to be consistent, nonstop, aggressive, and attacking it nonstop. Also, if you have 50 pounds or 30 pounds or even just 10 to 15 pounds still to lose of extra fat or, or extra fat tissue on your midsection, I'm sorry, but you didn't hit a fucking plateau. If you got 50 pounds to lose, 30 pounds to lose, how did you hit a plateau? It's impossible. So maybe once you're nearing your goal, you know, you need, and you're getting closer to your goal, then you might start talking something similar to a plateau. But all you need to do is tweak things up. Switch up maybe some of your, you know, your amount of protein, your carbs, your fat, you take in daily, and, that, and then that just becomes a specific game about what you need to tweak. You know, much like the way we always switch up our, our training routines and our workouts to always get the maximum results. Sometimes you need to rotate your nutrition around, whether it's switching up your calories, your macros, your grams, the percentages of your protein, carbs, and fats, the, your food choices, the protein types, or even sometimes even just the brand. You know, sure, your body can slightly get used to, to the same nutrition, but if it's solid, consistent, and disciplined, the changes will keep coming. There's no, there's no plateau. So now imagine maintaining your discipline and focus 24 hours a day, seven days a week, while also tweaking all the factors I just mentioned, and you'll see why plateaus don't exist. They're just fake. They're a myth. They're a fucking excuse. So you can always peel the onion and find out the real reason why someone isn't getting results, and it's not a plateau. So simply put, like 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not a plateau. If you're not like just so near your goals and you're just, just kind of stuck, that's a little different story. So sorry if that's not the answer some of you people are looking for when you asked, oh, how do I break through my plateau? I'm stuck at this and this weight. Sorry if you didn't get the answer you're looking for, but you should already know I'm gonna tell it like it is every week on this show. That's just the way it is. We have a case study. We're gonna have to fly through this also, and then we have to announce a couple other things. Case study is Christine Condon, who I showed her her paper right here. 
She was actually last month's client of the month. This is her poster right here that says her story. So we're actually going to read her story for her. She's actually in our Game Changer program, which is an advanced accountability and nutrition and lifestyle transformation program. We go deep into this shit in the Game Changer program. It's some deep stuff. We're going to actually talk about that a lot next week as we're coming to the end of the Game Changer program. And we're going to tell you all about their experience and the results next week. So she said, she's, I'm going to read her words. I started the Game Changer program because I needed some additional support. She said, I needed some additional support. I was not getting the weight loss results I wanted. I needed someone that would closely monitor my diet and support me and guide me to the best results that I could. I was working out daily and I knew I needed to push also with my fitness goals. She doesn't take any kind of medication or anything and she was, you know, her health was still pretty decent but she wasn't where she needed to be. She said, I believe my weight gain started after the birth of my children and then a very unhappy marriage and she packed on over 80 pounds from where she is today. So what has she tried? She's tried Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, Nutrisystem, Nutramost. I don't even know what the hell shit is. You guys buy some all kinds of shit three in the morning, some infomercial. Oh, Nutramost, I could do that in three, three minutes a day. You could look like me. Yeah, bull fucking shit. Beach body diet, she did 21 day fix, isogenics, ideal shape, Atkins, a no sugar diet. She had a nutritionist, she did low carb diets, working out at, at different chain gyms with a personal trainer. And she's sure she does other things that she's done that she's forgotten. So she started Peak Physique around Halloween. She's lost uh, over 6% body fat. This is old, this is a couple weeks ago. She said she lost 13 pounds. Pretty sure she lost more than that by now. She started this challenge a few weeks ago. She's down seven point, she was down 7.5 pounds in the last four weeks, 3% body fat. She trains at peak every day, most days, but she works out seven days a week when she's not here, she's doing it on home, at home, or when she's away, she's still working out every single time. She does double sessions once in a while or adds in a run to her training. So she said this Game Changer program made her stronger both physically and mentally. She always gave up or gave into temptations and took care of others around her and not herself. So this is a mental game, she said. That's why I'm, I am proving to myself I could achieve my goals and that I could stick to a plan and I could feel great doing it. I've always been a positive person, but this program has also made me more assertive. I have in the past let people walk all over me. My kindness makes me, kindness makes me an easy target, but I am getting stronger and realizing that I have a voice and it needs to be heard. We are turning her into a badass bitch. Hold that kid's ears. No kids should be allowed in here when I'm speaking. It ain't good. Anyway, she said, I'm also aware that she's constantly overthinks things and worry about other people more than she worries about and cares about herself. So she said, I worry what most, I worry what people will think and say if I do this or do that. I'm trying to read you guys' messages. All right. And this goes on and she talks about her fitness goals. And right now she said, if she meets someone today that was looking to, in the same situation as her, she would bring them over to the gym here, they'll meet some awesome, really awesome people, and they'll be trained by top-notch trainers while losing weight and learning how to live a healthier lifestyle, both mentally and physically. She said, we are a family, and it has changed her life. Her favorite thing about peak physique are the people. And not one family member is me. Blah, 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 blah. She's made some great connections with like-minded people who have similar goals, positive, fun, caring, wonderful people. Her life has changed and will continue to change as she works on achieving her goals. She's still a work in progress, obviously, like we all are. You should always be looking to get, get better every single day. You should be a better version of yourself from the day before. So she joined Peak Physique. She said, I joined Peak Physique for me, decided to join the change, Game Changer program for me, and I'm becoming a better version of me, and I love it. Yes, I love that I could buy smaller pants and shirts, but I really love this woman who's getting stronger on the inside and outside every day. Thank you, Peak Physique, for changing my life. So there were some awards. Marielle, we're flying through these because we have to start this class in a second. Marielle got a, a medal for 25 pounds down. Vanessa Torres got a bronze medal for, I think she's up to like 37 pounds down or something. What? How much? 47? Yeah. Oh, one of the things I saw, I saw, I thought said 37. Oh, so she needs a new medal soon. 25 is a bronze, 50 is a silver. So she's going to get another one in three days from now when she loses the next three pounds, right? <laughs> so then we have... Every month we do a client of the month that's based off your, not just your goals, it's just how you are interacting with the Facebook group, our VIP group, your check-ins, your posting of photos, your videos, and your tracking of your results on fit clients. And luckily our client, first the client of the month, there's 12 clients in a month, obviously, right? They get a, a big gift basket from the gym. That's the client of the month. Then at the end of the year, those 12 clients of the month are all eligible for client of the year who's then going to, has a chance, so you have a one in 12 chance of winning an entire year of unlimited boot camp and boxing classes. You, we were just talking about your whole life story, all your personal stuff about you. Hope you were watching when you were driving. That's very safe. So the client of the month, that was the last client of the month, Christine, who we just told her case story. This month, client of the month, is Armando over here. Get your ass over here. You are the client of the month. Now you want to be in here, right? Yeah. 
So he now has a 1 in 12 chance at the end of the year to win a free year. He's our, I think it's now the fourth month. We had December, January, February, March, right? So he's the fourth. Client of the month. He's now, how, many, how much weight have you lost so far? 30. 30? And how much time? Nine weeks and a half, 10 weeks. Nine, nine, 10 weeks, 30 pounds. Come here. Come on inside here. That was last week's client of the month. Ooh, and the freak who, who made me look like a fucking leprechaun. I don't know how that's supposed <laughs> to look like a Marine. I look like I belong on a Lucky Charms box. Look at this shit. <laughs> that is not a Marine. I don't know what Marine Corps that's from. Maybe that's like the Engl England Special Forces or something. I don't know. It's 18 pounds as of today. Yeah, so that was old. You wrote that like yeah. weeks ago. So 18 pounds. As of today. It's on the whole entire gym, but that was the game changer. The 18 pounds, yes. There you go. Thanks for uh, clearing that up. You're not a leprechaun. <laughs> All right, so that was our client of the month. We talked about everything we need to talk about. We rushed through some of the stuff. So anything we didn't get to today we're supposed to, we're going to put on next week's show since we spent so much time on our friends at the fire department. Hopefully some of the higher ups of the fire department yeah. are able to watch this and know what kind of service and what kind of bullshit their people are doing over there and they get their shit together because that is unacceptable. How they treated our people and what they did. And then when we call them, they hang up the phone on us. Not even me, the person who rented from them. But you guys can read back all that back again. So again, don't forget we're doing the raffle. It's $2 a ticket. The first $300 that we get on those raffles are going to go back to, to give her that money for the $300 deposit she lost. And any additional money that we get above $300, I am going to personally donate and sign the check to the West Nyack Fire Department because those douchebags need some extra money because they're robbing people of their money. So they're obviously strapped. I want to make sure they're safe over there, you know, helping the community. So we're going to donate the extra money over to the fire department because we are reasonable and we're still giving back even after you fucking stole from us. And... We also have a bunch of ways you guys could win raffles for this. It's going to be a $300 gift basket. We have a ton of other ways you guys could get free raffles other than the $2 tickets. I'm going to post on the VIP page. I'm going to tell you guys after we end this live. So check the VIP page. That's it for now. We've got to get started for the class.